become. <laughs> they don't start getting exhausted until past 60. So you're pretty much good until there. But we're not going to do that now because I'm going to explain some of this other stuff to you. But yeah, e macro. the reason you're going to want to macro evaluating intelligence is because that's going to increase the damage you're going to do with your starting spells. Um, like lightning, for example. With evaluating intelligence, you're going to be able to kill skeletons in about two or three casts of lightning. So uh, then you'll actually be able to cut a small profit off of killing things and that small profit is going to help you. You're also going to raise your majory from casting lightning. It's a, it's a great way to start. Um, but in order to reach, in order to max out your stats, these shitty stats, what you want to do is you want to train a number of skills. Uh, not necessarily ones that you're going to use, but some you will use at least until you can uh, progress your main skills. Um, and the reason is the main skills in this game, or skills in this game, actually progress very slowly. So, a, a part of your character's life, you're going to be running around with um, 70 majory or 80 majory, and you're going to have a lot of extra points. Uh, so, you can ride the, that 700 skill cap all the way to 700, or all the way to 7 GM skills. Um, and have use something like healing at 50 or or hiding at 50 just so you can use hiding every once in a while and healing every once in a while while you're leveling even though those aren't your skills um, they will just be handy just because you get those extra hit points or the extra hiding it's, it's very 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 handy um, let's see so yeah. I hope you understand part of what to do now. I will review this and make another one with more information and hopefully some more examples. Alright, thanks for your time and uh, have fun adventuring. Alright, I'm going to show you some of the uh, some of the things I talked about in the other video as well as some of the uh, tricks of the interface. Um, one thing you may have noticed me doing is uh, doing this, uh, which makes all these names pop up everywhere. And you do this by uh, hitting Control and Shift down at the same time, and you hold them down to get this, and you can see everybody's name over their heads this way. Um, another thing that's really very helpful for targeting is left click and dragging to get somebody's health bar. You know, this guy has a name that's just a jumble of letters, but uh yes. Yeah. As you can see when I look at when I put my mouse over this, he becomes highlighted in blue. If I wanted to shoot a spell at him, I could just click on this instead of clicking on him here. And they would do the same thing. Um <clears throat> so that's very helpful for when you're chasing somebody through the forest or when it, you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of time to sit and, and aim at someone. <laughs> Alright, but let's go spend this uh, newbie gold and transfer it to my other character. Because that's what we want to do. Here we have uh, Britain's Alchemy Shop. This is usually where I go and get my uh, regents on. Um, they have uh, pretty cheap ones here. <laughs> And I think that the, probably the smartest thing to do would be to spend your 167 gold on uh, regents for lightning. And uh, lightning only takes mandrake root and sulfurous ash, so it really only costs 2 GP to cast. Let's go in here. You just buy from him by left clicking, clicking buy. You can tell he is a NPC because his name is yellow. Oh, that reminds me. The prices, you're going to notice uh, that the prices are pretty high. Each regent is uh, 6 for black pearl, 3 for blood moss, 3 for everything. Um, if you say, if you type out, I wish to become a citizen, you'll get this pop up. And citizenship is account wide. And I, I recommend becoming a citizen of Britain first, at least until you can decide. 
uh, where you really want to become a citizen. And when you're a citizen, you get uh, lowered prices from vendors, the ability to own land within the town, uh, the ability to put vendors inside of the town, uh, you get to vote in the elections, and you get uh, protection from the guards, or by the guards. Uh, so yeah, you just click OK. I want to become a citizen. See down here it says you are now a citizen of Britain. Now let's uh, let's spend up this money. <laughs> and again, I think this took uh, nightshade and sulfurous ash. Let's see what we got here. Mandrake root, sulfurous ash. <laughs> so you just click on mandrake root. Which is by far one of the most commonly uh, used regents, and you hit the plus sign here until you have 167. Bam! All right, now I've got all my money spent on that. And I'm gonna go out and bring it to my other character, who I left sitting at the bank. And I'm gonna tell you how to access the bank too, and how to trade. Okay, so we run, 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 run. Well, here we are, Sir James. I hear he is a big one. Big what? Uh, you know. Alright, so you click and drag an item to another character to trade it to them. And here's the trade window. Here's my offer. Here's his offer. Of course, I'm playing him and I'm not expecting to get anything. And we're going to drop the bag here too. And uh, yeah, I'll just accept Sir James. Go back over to him. Oh, here's my other character. And I accepted by checking the blue box. Okay, and now and to get into my bank, you just stand near the bank and you type bank. Very simple. I had 167 extra of these. So I'm going to put them in the bag in my bank. But this is where I keep my unblessed regents. Now I have another bag where I keep my blessed regents. And the thing to remember with blessed regents is what's special about these is if you have these on your character, on your main level, they they won't uh, drop when you die. So they are very handy, especially for new players. It's important to take them out of the bag that they come in because if you leave, the bag itself is not blessed. Uh, so if they are in that bag and you die, you'll drop the bag and the regents inside of it. Um, but if you take them out of the bag and just leave them in the top level of your backpack, you won't be able to drop them and uh, you won't have anybody steal them from you. And blessed regents are really all you have when you start out, so you got to protect those little guys. <laughs> Um, another thing is don't mix them with non-blessed regents, which would be ones you bought from the store, uh, because when you do that, they become the it just changes the whole stack to normal regents. So yeah, and you can only hold a set number of items in your bank. So right now, you, as you can see, my bank is pretty crowded. Um, I'm actually saving up for a house right now, so I can have more storage. <laughs> And, um, okay, so let's go back to this guy. Alright, let's go over some of the options you're going to want to use in this game. Just to make gameplay more smooth. <laughs> There's a few options in game you're going to want to change. Um, if you click options on your paper doll, and you go to the top right tab on here, um, you're going to want to, this is what it normally looks like, uh, you want to disable, enable pathfinding with right with double right click, it's very annoying, and then the third one as well, hold down tab key for combat instead of tapping it to toggle combat mode, you want to disable that too, um, much easier, and check the box that says your character will always run if this is checked. Um, when you're chasing someone, or just when you're going from A to B, there isn't a point in walking. It's just like, it's for RP value pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I don't ever do that. You can also, if you go down to the next tab, you can change uh, the color of your speech, which is kind of cool. 
I think it adds a little personal flair to your character. Uh, the default is yellow, but I just changed it to blue. See, now I can talk in blue. I think it just says a little bit about yourself, uh, like what color you choose to talk in. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it's a little more customization. Uh, Alright, and then let's go over some of the razor options you're going to want to change. Um, normally, use smart CPU reduction is checked, but you want to uncheck that because that can actually cause some uh, hiccuping in your game. And this game is very old. There isn't really a computer that can't play this game. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So there isn't really much reason to have the CPU reduction. Um, with client priority, I know that I've had uh, awesome success with this, running this on old computers. If, you're, if your game is lagging, you can put the client priority up, and uh, your computer will devote more resources to running the game smoothly, <laughs> uh, which can be very handy. And then in filters, if you go down, you want to check the box that says light levels and basically what it does okay it doesn't make a difference right now but that's because it's daytime uh... there are some areas of the game where it's very dark and you're not going to be able to see anything unless you have a torch or you cast a spell um, but if you filter light levels it'll appear to be bright as day everywhere you go and everybody does it so you know just do it stay competitive all right, now let's go to the options tab. Um, you're gonna want to check the box on the right that says "Open new corpses within five tiles." Normally, it'll say two, but you want to click it and just change it to five. Very simple. Um, and then let's go to more options. In here, um, we've got uh, show health above people slash creatures you want to check check this uh, what this does is whenever somebody's health changes on your screen it'll display a percentage above their head and that percentage represents how much health that person or, or monster has um, another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check the box that says automatically open doors uh, auto unequip hands before casting and auto un slash re equip hands for potions. Um, that is. Those are pretty damn handy, I must say. Um, with the auto opening corpses, uh, that really helps just for looting, uh, looting fast. Um, looting in this game is a game in itself. It's a mini game. It's a game within a game. As you can see, I have on the top of my screen this is why it's in classic classic theme by the way uh, it displays how many I have of each reg I transferred everything to my main character so this character is zero of everything and the, uh, you can also see your health bar your mana bar and your stamina bar in that order on the top of the screen and that's just nice uh, for for all the time just knowing what is there. Now I'm going to hop on my other character and show you how to kill some monsters after you've uh, raised your eval and you're ready to go shoot some lightning bolts. Um, the way that hotkeys work in this game is you're just going to go to your hotkeys tab and there's a lot of hotkeys actually built into Razer and you're going to want to spend some time kind of exploring this. There's Razer is a really powerful tool and knowing how to use it effectively is going to give you so much power in this game and uh... trust me the other there are other people out there trying to figure it out even better um, but yeah so lightning bolt is a spell it's a fourth circle spell so you just click spells you hit the plus bring this out you got mini heal regular heal um, first, all these, uh, d disregard Bushido, Chivalry, and all this stuff is newer stuff that is not in this version of the game. I have, um, my greater heal on, uh, control one and lightning on control D. And how you set these is you just click on it, 
click in here, click the key you 